PTV Rosalind Lester. I'm Mike Galliano. I'm Aiden Wayne. I'm PTV's Charlie Harder. I'm Eo Gifford. Welcome back to another show of PTV at PHS. Today is Thursday, March 18th, 2021. I'm PTV's Tyler Ritchie. Topping off our show, we bring you our weekly COVID update. Positive cases here in Marshall County are still on the decrease, which remains to be a good sign. The state is still updating cases daily online at coronavirus.in.gov. Currently, the Indiana Department of Health is reporting that there has been more than 5,500 positive cases in Marshall County since the beginning of the pandemic last March. On Wednesday, the state's color-coded county map is updated. Colors are used to provide guidelines for local decision making. We are happy to report that Marshall County remains in the blue color code once again, meaning that it is the lowest COVID count color a county can receive. Speaking of the fight against COVID, Plymouth Schools is hosting an on-site vaccination clinic for all PCSC employees who wish to receive the vaccine today at PHS from 2 o'clock until 5.30. The clinic will be held at Plymouth High School and is being provided by the Marshall County Health Department. Employees will be able to choose from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine or the Moderna vaccine. The second vaccination clinic will, for those who will need the second dose of the Moderna vaccine will be held on Thursday, April 15th from 2 to 5.30 p.m. PCSE employees do not need to register ahead of time or make an appointment. However, any PCSE employee getting the shot will need to plan to wait 15 minutes after receiving it as a standard vaccine protocol. Employees attending are asked to park in a lot between a football field and a gym, and they're supposed to enter through door six and follow the signs in the multi-purpose room. If you've ever found yourself a little bit curious about St. Patrick's Day, we're about to fill you in. And with the luck of the Irish on your side, you'll soon be a St. Patrick's Day trivia master if you pay close attention to the next story. What was the first color associated with St. Patrick's Day? Yellow, black, red, or blue? Blue. Uh, red. Blue. Uh, yellow. Okay, so it's definitely not green, right? Oh. Blue. Green? Blue. What? <laughs> How is it blue? How do leprechauns earn their gold? Picking pockets, collecting teeth, growing potatoes, or making shoes? Making shoes. Growing potatoes. Making shoes? Making shoes. Uh, picking potatoes. Just growing potatoes <laughs> and picking pockets. <laughs> oh. Two of them together. Oops. Making shoes. Bang. What did St. Patrick use Sharmax for? To flavor his coffee, for good luck, as medicine, or to illustrate the Holy Trinity? Uh, for good luck. Uh, the Holy Trinity. Uh, to illustrate the Holy Trinity. Bang. The Plymouth Park and Recreation Department is hiring now for summer jobs. They are looking for students who are interested in working as lifeguards, camp counselors, and seasonal semi-skilled laborers for maintenance and landscaping. Applications can be picked up at the park office or, or can be easily printed from the City of Plymouth website and then must be taken to the park office by April 1st at approximately 4 p.m. to be considered for a position. The office is open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you're on the hunt for a, a job other than at the Plymouth Pool, we have a few others to tell you about as well. Whitney's is looking for multiple full-time and part-time employees and they start at $12 per hour. Weekends are required and they have open availability for both morning and night shifts. If you are interested, apply on Indeed.com or in person. We were also notified that our Rochester boat company is looking for a peer installer. If you are interested in working on your tan this summer and on the weekends as well, this might be the perfect job for you. Just know that the position is seasonal. To apply, call 574-223-2675. As you may have heard, Plymouth High School is cutting our radio TV dual credit class next year so the fate of our PTV class is not looking good for the future. That news is hitting our crew kind of hard and we aren't alone. The program has been very instrumental for students who want to pursue digital marketing or multimedia as a career. We are going to, to take a quick break so you can meet one of our proud PTV alumni that is a little numb about the program being cut. But please stick around because we have some PTV sports news coming up in a whole lot less than two minutes. Hi everyone, my name is Josie Kuntz and I'm a PHS 2018 graduate. I took both the PTV and marketing classes at the high school multiple times actually, because um, I really enjoyed it. And those classes were essential for me in many ways. 
in high school, it brought me so many opportunities, like going to Notre Dame and filming. Um, it brought me my internship. I had my senior year of high school and it helped me be involved in the corporation in ways I could have never imagined, um, but am so grateful for. Not only that, but because of those classes, I figured out what I wanted to do in college and beyond because I, like I I had no idea. Um, and now here I am, a film and media senior at Taylor University. And uh, when I graduate in two months, I'll be taking a full-time position as a media coordinator at a church. Um, and I give all like, thanks to the PTB and marketing programs because that's where it all started and that's how I discovered what I love to do. Um, and so hearing that the PTB program is being cut really is sad for me because I couldn't imagine like where I'd be without those classes um, and without those opportunities. Um, and I've always bragged about Plymouth for kind of that class and the opportunities it's brought me. And so it makes me wonder what students like me will have to do in order to get those same opportunities without the class. Um, so yeah, that's really sad to hear, but I'm really grateful that I got to be part of the class and I'm really grateful for the ways that it has influenced my life. Yeah. Thanks Josie for your kind words and congratulations on your upcoming graduation and job offer. Well, moving on to sports news, a good, there is a good sign that we are moving cautiously past the initial stages of the pandemic. PHS Athletics held a student athletic letter of intent signing yesterday in person. First of all, welcome. Thank you for being here today. We are excited. This is our first signing in over a year uh, here in person. Plymouth High School senior Mackenzie DeJarnett officially announced during advisory that she will play basketball at Anderson University this fall. She has played ball for the Lady Pilgrims all four years of high school in her career. McKenzie was joined by our close family, alongside our friends and member of the athletic staff to announce the big news. All eyes are on, the, are on the Hoosier State with the 2021 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament kicking off today. The majority of the 67 games will be played in Indianapolis, but Ball State, Butler, IUPUI, IU, and Purdue University will all be hosting the games in a two-week plus tourney as well. We sent PTV's Aiden Lynn on the fun assignment to get your prediction of which two teams will make it to the final game and who will reign supreme in the national championship. I think Illinois is going to win the March Madness tournament. Who do you think is going to win the March Madness tournament this, this March? Butler Bulldogs! <laughs> what? They're not part of it? What? Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to predict that Illinois wins it this year. Um, normally I'm a, a Duke fan, so I've had a tough, uh, tough year with, with that, but uh, I would say that Illinois um, comes out the winner. I don't know, it's going to be tough. Gonzaga's going to be a tough out. Uh, right now Illinois is hot. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in a lot of different brackets around, um, around the area, so I'll have different winners, but uh, I'm going to have a tough time picking against Gonzaga. The Indiana Speech and Debate State Competition took place this past weekend at PHS. 21 Plymouth High School students competed among the 14 different categories of events. Out of the 21 who qualified, state runner-ups were El Huyan in the original oratory, Meg Meredith Robertson in prose, Quentin Barker and Autumn Baird in duo, and the state champions were Austin Kaiser and Topaz Rogers in duo. Many of the students involved have been dedicated for years and have a passion for speech and debate, but for sophomore Lou Herrera, he just got involved this school year and has skyrocketed in both of his categories that he competes in, poetry and original oratory. But since sixth grade or so, I've had teachers just constantly bombard me with requests like, hey, join the speech team, you'd be great. You're a great talker, you're a great writer, you'll do perfect. And I always told them, no. You know, my sixth grade uh, English teacher, uh, Mrs. Atkinson, she's the one who got me. She's the first one to suggest it. I always declined her offer. I spent a lot of time in Lincoln while she was coaching speech. I would just watch. What a unique story. Overall, the PHS Speech and Debate team finished their season as state runner-ups in a 2A competition and fourth in the overall state. Well, that's a wrap of this week's show. I'm PTV's Tyler Ritchie. Have a great day, PHS, and have a safe break as well, and I'll see you all when I get back.